Yo everybody, Rob Morgell, your favorite title turn nut job. In today's video, I think I've got a question that I want answered about as bad as you do. And that is between the Ridgeback defense and the Exigent, Exigent? Exigent defense. Which one is the best? So we've got their two compact titaniums. And man, I'm gonna butcher these names going back and forth so much, but I will do my best. But it's the Street Goblin over here, and it's the Rhino X over here, X as an X-ray. Then to compare them to their bigger brothers in titanium, which is the Rhino S as in Sierra, and then the Vanish 556. So what I'm going to do is put both Ridgeback suppressors on two bolt action 223s and 16 inch to decide which one sounds better between the two. Now I think it's going to be the bigger titanium one, but we'll find out. Then when I find the winner of these two, I will then go and do a test with the winner of these two, find out who is the quietest between the two of these. When I find the winner of the two of these, I will put them head to head to find out which is the, the quietest of the four of these. Once I know the quietest of the four, then I will put it up against the current king of 556, and that is the Sig Hexium 556. Again, the Sig Hexium 556. After I do that, I might, just for my own curiosity, go into some of these suppressors over here, and that is the Dillon Rifle Company 556. This is the new 9mm suppressor from Stealth Additive Works, and it actually can do pretty much anything. So I'm curious to hear how it stacks up against the current best. And then, of course, we've got the Cat JL, just to see kind of of all things being the best there is, where it falls in line. And then lastly, I've got the Centurion suppressors, the 556 and the 762. The 762 just arrived. I've only got a few rounds through it. But the 556, I just wanted to see where it stacked up. Yes, it's a little bit longer, but it's so light in their titanium model that I'm curious to see how it stacks up because it's been one of my go-to suppressors. So again, 30,000 foot view. We're going to go titanium versus Inconel in their subcompact slash compact from Ridgeback. And then we're going to do the same thing with the exigent suppressors. Once we find the winner of each category, head to head. Once we find the winner of that category, head to head with the SIG suppressor. Whoever wins that will then compare to some of my uh, newer and then old tried and trues just to see how they all stack up because I'm curious. Guys, if you enjoy learning this content as much as I do, make sure you hit that like, comment, subscribe buttons. It really does go a long way for the channel. Guys, I appreciate you. Let's get into it. Okay, I've got the PMC X-Tac ammunition we always use. I've got the compact Inconel Ridgeback on the right, and then I've got the full-size titanium Ridgeback on your left. Let's load them up, see which one's better. I've got the lapel mic right here, so it should be pretty fair and centered. Here we go. Start with the little one, the big one. Yeah, on the first round, the big one is substantially quieter. Yeah. Again, kind of what I anticipated, smaller, more compact for the uh, heavy use and duty type weapons uh, inside CQC, but sound isn't quite as big a factor as it is on the civilian side with the titanium and slightly larger one. So kind of exactly what I expected. Let's switch brands. Okay, we've got Exigent up to bat now. I've got the full-size titanium over here on this side, and then we've got the compact Inconel on this side. We'll run the same thing. We'll start on the Inconel. Ouch, that was substantially louder. Loudest one so far. That was pleasant. I can deal with that. I'm going to not do this left one again. Um, obviously, we know who the winner is. I'm not doing a second round. So real quick, as we recap, those two minis side by side, um, the Exigent does not win. The Ridgeback is substantially better. I didn't even need to put them next to each other to figure that out. Now, on the full-size ones, I don't know. They both sound very similar, so let's find out. Obviously, I've got the Ridgeback over here. Obviously, I've got the Exigent over here. Let's find out. Yeah, I think I've done this test before, and I think the Ridgeback won last time, and I think we're right on track for the same thing. It's just a little bit deeper of a tone to it. Ridgeback is still holding that spot. We'll reverse the order, do Ridgeback first. Yeah, the Ridgeback has a quieter and more of a ch, and this guy's got a deeper sound to it, but it's, it's loud enough that the Ridgeback still takes the cake. Okay, so we know that the Ridgeback is now the quietest. Let's again put the Ridgeback back up against the SIG and see who still maintains that. Before it was the SIG, let's find out. Fun side note, SIG has a weird mount that it kind of funnels out inside of their mount. I removed that mount for this experiment because before it was like permanently attached. Now that I can finally remove it, I've got a standard mount on it. So if it had a leg up because of that mount, we're about to find out. And if that is true, we're gonna find out what else we can apply that mount to to give it that leg up. 
Interesting. I wonder if that mount did play a big role because it seemed a little bit louder but deeper on the right. Maybe as if that mount is helping it. One more time, this time SIG first. Yeah, in this experiment, now that I've taken the mount off, I almost prefer the ridge back over the SIG. Let's reincorporate that mount and let's put it on the SIG first and then maybe even rotate it onto the ridge back and see what difference it makes. This is that weird mount. You can see how it's very different than the standard mount. It kind of cones out rather than just having a flat surface. Okay, same two suppressors. This time I have the SIG mount on the SIG suppressor. It does make a difference. It seems like the SIG is equal to or maybe a little better than with that mount. When I put a standard mount on it, it sounds like it's a little bit worse than the uh, Ridgeback. This is very interesting. I'm going to swap the mounts and see if it makes a difference. And maybe I think right now the SIG is just a little bit better with its mount, but with the standard mount, the SIG is just a little bit worse than the Ridgeback. So there's some secret sauce going on inside of that mount. Guys, I know you want a mount video. There is much more to come. I'm learning too, and as I just learned this, it's like, all the experimentation I've done thus far, this throws a wrench in that. So it kind of sets back that video progress where uh, I guess I got to go back and look at not just what I like for mounting, not just what's most reliable and least POI shift, but also what affects sound. It's a very interesting thing that we keep evolving so quick. It's really very hard to keep up. I'm going to switch the mounts and see what happens. Already, I've swapped out. Now I've got the SIG on my left and I've got the Ridgeback on my right. I left the mounts in place. So I've got the Ridgeback with the SIG mount. I've got the SIG with a standard mount. Let's see what happens. Start on the left. It made a difference, yeah. That's, this silencer is substantially quieter now than the SIG suppressor. So this mount, there's some secret sauce about how they must be coiling gases to move it into that mount and get rearward pressure. So in other words, Whoever has that mount between these two silencers is the quieter of the two silencers. So I'm going to take, well, I guess I already know, without SIG having the SIG mount, it is kind of equal to maybe even a step below the Ridgeback suppressor. So perhaps I, I crowned the SIG suppressor king accidentally. I, I think I'm going to have to admit some mistake here, guys. I apologize. To me, the SIG is quieter when it has the SIG mount, but they had attached it so strong, and apparently there's a couple other guys that got the same suppressor I got, and they had to send theirs back for RMA. And then a couple gun stores told me the same thing, that a lot of SIG silencers were going back to have the muzzle device removed. Once they had removed the muzzle device and gave it back to me only two days ago, I got to see the mount. And when I looked at that mount, I thought, wow, that's weird. I haven't seen somebody do that yet. And apparently they've got some secret sauce inside of that mount that makes their silencer just a little bit quieter. So it might be that the Ridgeback is actually the king of sound as it stands now. Now there's a couple other silencers I've been testing that are in the more full-size configuration that, you know, that's a different category. But as far as the medium small silencers go, I think the Ridgeback is back to being the king of sound. Okay, so since I now know that the SIG silencer had a little way of cheating and therefore is not the king of 5.56 and actually the Ridgeback is, I wanted to put flat caps on both just to make sure I remove any possible cheating and I want to revisit some old topics. So I've now got the current king of sound up against the Dillon Rifle Company 5.56. Now this is not a titanium suppressor and that's kind of why it falls to my purview because I just don't love ink and L suppressors. I much prefer a titanium and I know they've got a titanium on the way. Last I spoke to them, they said it just wasn't quite ready yet. They wanted to critique it a little bit and get it exactly perfect. So I'm gonna leave this guy on here just to do another head to head to make sure we're getting all things fair again. They sound the same. I think they're a tie. So now that I'm looking at things through a second lens, I think that both of these are the king of sound. It's just a matter of do you want ink and or titanium? Because the other suppressors we tested today were ink and but they were smaller. So if you wanted something that's a bit more capable in sound, I think that Dillon Rifle Company takes the cake for being ink and and quiet quietest. And I think that the Ridgeback Rhino full-size titanium, I think these two are neck and neck for best sounded. So I would say at this point, they are in fact number one and interchangeable. So going forward, let's roll into some of my old tried and trues that are a little bit larger and see how they stack up. Before that, one more wild card. I've got this nine millimeter suppressor from Stealth Additive Works that I want to see how it stacks up to these smaller size suppressors. This suppressor is only four inches long and so far it's blown my mind in its capabilities. Let's rotate that in and we'll put it up again 
against the Dillon Rifle Company because I'm, I'm going to call these two interchangeable at this point. Yow, that rang my bell. Oof, that was a bad idea. That 9mm aperture is just a little bit too small for this. The 5.56 is on the way. We'll work that in as soon as it arrives. All right, this is the Maximus L5.56. A lot of guys have asked, have you put that up against... And I was like, you know what? I haven't. I don't know why I haven't, but I haven't. And so now I'm going to fix that. The Maximus L, this is the Inconel one. I have the titanium and the Inconel. Sound-wise, I think they both perform the same. The biggest debate is in abuse and flash suppression. So for this one, I've just got the Inconel on here. So we've got Inconel to Inconel for a very fair comparison. I would expect the Maximus to do good, but I don't know. I don't know which one sounds better. I would say the Maximus was a little bit louder, but it has such a different sound to it that I could see an argument to either side as to which one is better. Let's see if it changes on round two. They sound different, but I think they're equally loud. They just have a very different sound to them. I really truly like both of them and they are n not offensive to my ears at all. I would say this, all things considered, the Dillon is obviously substantially smaller. The Maximus, when I did the stacking test where I shoot multiple rounds real fast, that Maximus really, really did very well. So all things considered, if I had to pick between the two, I do like that Maximus. Sound profile-wise, they sound very different. So I, I don't know which one is better. I think they both sound great. You could argue either direct. Okay, I've got the Maximus L762 now on the right. This one is one of my newer suppressors, and so far, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Putting it through 5.56 maybe is not going to be a fair shake, but I'm interested to see how it stacks up to the testing we've done so far today. Maximus. Yeah, that's got a lot of pop to it. I'm going to say the Dylan still holds the cake in 5.56, but again, this is a 7.62 suppressor, so you could debate over a couple of things. The 5.56 one does sound great in 5.56. Sometimes a 7.62 sounds great in 5.56 as well. This just isn't the case in this example. All right, I've done, I believe we've done this test before, but just to circle back now that we've done a little bit more experimentation, I'm a big fan of doing lots of days of experimenting before I report. And sometimes even over those multiple days of testing, things change. And now we're back to the Dillon Rifle Company, who I'm deciding sound-wise is equal to the Ridgeback full-size titanium suppressor in 5.56, that they are kind of one and the same based on the role that you're most interested in. But now I want to compare it to the Cat JL, who historically has been the king of sound. Let's see. There is a new suppressor that I would call the new king of 5.56. I just don't have it. Once I have it, I'll start comparing it. Okay, here we go. The Cat JL definitely does sound better, but it's such a small amount better given the size difference. I don't know. One more time. Yeah, louder, but very deep, quieter, and very pleasant. So I would say the Cat JL still gets to hold its place, but if we were to compare size or some other things, I could see a strong merit for someone saying, for 556 five, needs, the Cat JL is great, but I prefer my insert name here, like uh, Dillon Rifle Company 556 five, or the Ridgeback Rhino S. Now, I got one more question I want to ask here. I want to put that SIG mount on the Dillon Rifle Company 556 five, and then put it head to head with the Rhino and see if it does the same effect as it did for the Rhino and the SIG. Okay, now I've got the Dillon Rifle Company over here and the Ridgeback over here. The Ridgeback has a standard mount and the Dillon Rifle Company has that SIG mount that seems to coil gases outbound. Let's see if it makes a difference for the Dillon Rifle Company just the same. Let's start with it. No, it seems that on the Ridgeback and on the SIG, the SIG mount is making those suppressors quieter. On the Dillon, probably by its design, it's not making it sound any better. So it's interesting how this mount, when worked into play with different suppressors, is having a positive or a neutral effect on the different suppressors. Guys, if you're enjoying and learning this stuff as much as I am, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let's wrap this video up. Okay, quite a debrief today. First off, I apologize. I called the SIG the king of sound before, and the mount was very much so permanently attached, and I didn't get to see it until I sent it to them and they sent it back. Once I got it back, I could see that it's got a weird cone to it, and that was obviously done for a reason. So once I pulled this off and put a flat mount onto it that doesn't have this fancy feature, I realized that it performed equal to all my other in-class favorites, 
maybe even a little bit worse them. And I would say the Ridgeback Rhino might even be back to being in the front of the line of the smaller 5.56 suppressors. So again, back to being truly very impressed with this suppressor. And when I put this mount into the suppressor, it sounds better. When I put this mount into the SIG suppressor, it sounds better. When I put in the Dillon Rifle Company 5.56 suppressor, it doesn't sound better. It sounds just the same. So there's a weird technology that's going on in this that helps in some silencers. Now that I've been able to disassemble them, I apologize and I admit fault that I was wrong. The SIG 5.56 Hexium suppressor is still a great suppressor, but I think the Ridgeback sounds just a little bit better than it when you put them side by side. All in all, however, the Cat JL is still the king of sound in 5.56. Um, I know there's another suppressor manufacturer I tested, and once I get that back, I'll be able to do more testing, and it might have replaced the Cat JL. We will see once I get more time with them head to head, but so far I think there is one slightly better than the Cat JL. But aside from like the king of overall sound, Cat JL and its competitor, of the 556 five, specifics, especially kind of the mid-size stuff, I would say these four you can't go wrong with. If you're into a high schedule of fire, the Maximus L does really good at mitigating back pressure, especially when you're stacking. The Dillon Rifle Company 556 five, sounds really just as good as the best that I have. It's ink and so it takes more abuse. And then the SIG, I like the SIG a lot. It's still one of my newer ones and I've got a lot more testing to do, but the SIG is lightweight, it is low back pressure, and it sounds really very good, just not quite as good as these two suppressors. But overall, if you pick somewhere between these four, you're killing it. All four of these are the best on the market thus far in my experiences. Over here, the 7.62 Maximus L, it just didn't do good on 5.56. That's kind of not a surprise. Some do well on 5.56, some don't. This one probably does good in 7.62, more testing to come. And then I stacked them in order of sound. This is a 9mm Stealth Additive Works Presser. It's a do-all. It does a lot of things well, like 9mm it does really well, but 5.56 it does okay, and so on. Uh, these two suppressors, the Exigent, smaller ones called the Street Goblin, slightly different versions of these two, and, and they didn't sound terribly good by comparison to everything else. The Ridgeback, which is their uh, Rhino, I think they call it their X, which is their ink, uh, Inconel version, that sounded really very good. I didn't even have to put them side by side to know that this sounded better. And then the Vanish 556 was a very impressive suppressor, and then I got a, a few more silencers and all of a sudden like, it took the cake for a minute and then ingenuity happened and a lot of other companies came forward and creeped forward just a little bit more and a little bit more and i would say while this kicked butt and the chaos there's a few newer silencers that are also doing really really very good and i think back then i said these two sound very similar and i think that's still accurate today but as i'm doing more and more testing and these cans are getting seasoned they've had over a thousand rounds plus through each one of them they're starting to take in their true sound profile and i'm thinking that these four are the core of my favorite 556 five, suppressors today guys if you like this content do me a favor hit those like comment subscribe buttons it really does go a long way the tripod video is on the way i'm working on it there's a lot more to come with that same thing with the mountain video you think you know something about mounts and then they make this cool little cone on the end of a mountain that's quieter somehow and it makes me question everything i know about mounts and then dive back into mounts so that i make sure i get good information out there into the wild so i appreciate you stay safe and we'll see you in the comments